Hey there, Internet. This is Kevin Coons here for 360 a Day. I'm here with my buddy, J.B. Gooman. I messed up your last name. No, no, J.B. Gooman, you guys. I'm so concerned about it. Uh, J.B. and I met up last year, or this year, at Sundance. Um, his film, The Art of Being, was showing there. It's an amazing experimental film that was showing in the New Frontier section. And now it's showing in L.A. at Outfest. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So where, where is the screen? Where can people check it out? The screen is at the MOCA, the Museum of Contemporary. My first time in the MOCA, so I'm super, super stoked. And tell me a little bit about this movie. How long have you been working on it? What inspired it? Uh, the Art of Being took about five and a half years to make. It's a 50-minute um, experimental experience. It is a multi-dimensional story, which I know is a lot. And it's loosely based on Ariel, uh, but instead of her rising out of the sea, she's rising uh, into a higher dimension while maintaining her like lower dimension of existence. I know, I know, but that's the you asked. <laughs> so when I saw this at Sundance, it was quite um, entrancing. There were parts where you put on 3D glasses and stuff too. Like, tell me what inspired that. Um, well, because it's multi-dimensional, obviously we have one dimension, two dimension, three dimensions, and so on. So the film, as she moves upwards, the uh, the the, um, the mechanics of the uh, aesthetics of the film kind of go up in dimension. So you'll have things like the glasses and stuff like that coming in. That. So for folks who are in LA, can they still go see this, or is it sold out? Like, what's, what's the status of tickets? It's sold out July twenty first, four thirty p.m. at the Mocha. Be there, or be square. But um, as much as it's sold out, there's still a standby line. In Outfest and the Mocha both say that ninety percent of the standby line does get in. So ninety so percent of you, if you go standby line, you can still get in. Um, what I'm curious to know is what is the next step with this project? Do you, do you have another festival you want to show it at? Do you plan to distribute it? Are you going to self-distribute? Uh, I don't know if that's going to be the issue. I'm looking for kind of like a residency. Yeah. So someone at the moment can keep it there for a while, or it can go like online to like camera music and online or something like that, yeah. where it kind of like just finds its place. It'll keep traveling different festivals. But at the moment, I'm working on its sequel, which of course, I with this guy. Can't talk about this at all. It's yeah. under wraps. Yes. Nothing can be said about this sequel, <laughs> but it's going to be awesome. It's yeah. all I will say about it based on, you know, uh, what we've seen so far. Yes. Um, I'm so, the word so, so, so people can see a trailer for this online. They can see teasers. Yeah. But the full piece, you can only see it if you go to this location. And because of it, you, know, you need the glasses and things like that, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... It spent, you spent five years working on this. How are you able to finance it and just keep it going and keep the momentum going over like a half decade? Oh, brother. A tenacious but capital T. You know, sometimes things were like glitter or two strings. Other setups were sound stages with a huge rig and 30 people. It really just kind of was following the white rabbit, pun intended. Um, and all corniness aside, just kind of really sticking with my heart and knowing that each day, each situation, this is what I need for the film. And if I didn't have the money this month, then I'll do it next month. And I just kept going, you know, through those motions. Some people were extremely generous and believed in what I was doing and supported me, which I'm so thankful for, which adds just the, you know, to the humility factor on my end. And then other times, um, situations kind of manifested. You know, I got the rig, I got sponsored from certain companies, and then it just happened. So cool. five years later, I'm done. Let's talk about your first film, Spork. Yes. Um, that it won an audience award at Tribeca. Yes. And it's like became super popular online because you released a director's cut on YouTube. Yeah. Which I think is super smart, by the way. If you're having <laughs> trouble getting out of the world, just put your stuff on YouTube and people will see it. As a result, Miley Cyrus saw it, so it was like her favorite film ever. Yeah, she tweeted it was her favorite film of all time. It's crazy. So tell me, what was it like when you first started to make that movie, just trying to break in, into creating you know, your first feature film? That was, that was really hard. Um, I mean, granted, it only took, you know, nine months to film, and I was told I had a $70,000 budget for a feature film. Seventy grand for a feature film was obviously, like, really? Yeah. But I said yes, because, you know, I'm a humble cat. It's my first movie I really yeah. directed. And the budget went from 70 to a million, because the backers who were doing it were going to do three films with this, like, pot of money. But once the script went on, um, once it got released through uh, the, uh, the trades for auditions, then um, Yardley Smith, the voice of Lisa Simpson, was like, I want to be in it. And, and Beth Grant and, and um, Elaine Henderson, like all these random actors and actresses were like, I want to be in this film, which put a lot on me. I was like, this is amazing. So the budget went to a million. We shot the whole thing in nine months. It was extremely strenuous because a million is like, for a film, a drop in a bucket. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So 
But it was done, and um, it was really weird. This fork is about a girl who's uh, a born intersex. She's boy and girl, not a spoon, not a fork. So she's got upstairs and downstairs. She's terrified through and terrorized through middle school, made fun of and all that. But in the end, she finds herself through accepting herself, loving herself, and her friends accept her. And it's, it's through dance and all that stuff. It's a dark comedy slash love and light thing. But um, yeah, I got it. I made it. Got it done. I got passed on by a bunch of festivals because they were like, "This is the weirdest shit ever." Obviously, I mean, as you heard, it's like what? But I got into Tribeca at midnight screening, sold out, and they added multiple screenings because there was like such a demand for it, which obviously brought me to tears. And then it won audience award, which had me literally on my knees, being like, "Oh my god, thank you!" And then ever since then, I've been going with it. But how I got it made, I randomly knew someone who knew a production company who was doing three movies. And they were like, oh, we like your film. Were well, you willing to make it for 70 grand? And again, as crazy as that sounds, I was like, following the white rabbit. And yeah. like, sure, I guess I will figure it out. We'll shoot it in a warehouse with no permits. Like, totally. I don't know. Yeah. But it ended up being a million and it ended up working out wonderfully. <laughs> Where can people see it now if they want to check it out? Spork, the director's cut, is on my YouTube page. Uh, I sold it to Warner Brothers Online and the contracts ended up lapsing. And so once that happened, I wanted to re-distribute uh, the director's cut, yeah. but that wasn't happening. So I was like, I'll just put it on myself. Because the movie came out in 2012. So it's been a minute. Yeah. But it peaked, it reached number one on Netflix for three months and, and had a wonderful moment and was a full cool audience for it. So. What has it been like posting something like that to YouTube where you can see the comments and like be able to like get kind of like, I don't know, I've always liked that as like a bounce board for anything that I create. It's like, ooh, I can like get automatic feedback from just random strangers all over the world. So like, is that, was that a different kind of like feedback that you got trying to get at a big film festival? Yes, yes, for sure. Well, I mean, in some cases, like, what the hell is this? <laughs> it's like, that's not very nice. Um, and other things. But for the most part, you know, it's, it's like at a 90 percentile positive. Now. Cool. And even Rotten Tomatoes gave me love. And and it's doing really well. It, to be honest with you, YouTube, like you said earlier, is such a cool outlet because regardless of the coin that you do or don't make from it, yeah. it's inspiring me to keep moving forward because the love is pretty intense. So. And it's also kind of like a billboard to the world in a way. Like, this is my work. Yeah. Like, come check me out. And I think that, you know, it's just about, you know, kind of moving that, that forward all the time, just bigger and bigger projects. So you, you have a ton of other projects on your plate. We yes. cannot talk about them, but no. a lot a lot is on this guy's IMDb in the future. So <laughs> check him out. Um, people can go check out your website at... Uh, www.jbboomanjr.com. I'm going to link to it in the description. I hope I earned your subscription today. If so, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this content. If you want to see more interviews with awesome filmmakers, then write a comment below and let me know who you want to see interviewed next. And I'll reach out. Subscribe. He's right. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>